Hello there everyone, my name is Rexby and welcome back to some more Let's Play Professor Layton and Pandora's Box. We're going to look around the village plaza here and if we uh, head to the right, uh, there's a bunch of fireworks and some cool cows here. So uh, yeah, that's those are some giant balloons. Oh, there's some livestock competition going on, huh? That's uh, interesting. Sounds fun indeed. Hmm. Ah, it, it's not quite ready to start yet, so... I suppose uh, we'll have to come back here later to uh, experience that. So uh, yeah, we need to walk around a bit. And that that's honestly all you can do here. I think there's maybe a few... Um... Oh yeah, it still hasn't started, I know. There may be a few hint coins around here somewhere. Um, but I don't quite know for sure. So, you know what, let's just uh, come back later and move to the left now. Uh, and we already saw this place, so let's head further to the left. What's on this side? Um, there's a barrel, some bushes. Oh, a nice hint coin there. Nice. Um, what do you have to say? Hmm. I never forget a face. So yeah, we did come on the Molentary Express. That's right. Ah, a few key facts. That's uh, good to know. So let's see what he says. Okay, if you know only one name, make sure it's Mr. Anderson. Okay, Mr. Anderson, got it. He's swimming in money and runs drops, though. But he treats everyone with respect, even the postman, which is a parcel, which is a very fitting name for a postman. So, yeah, even nice guys dug him. He spends all his time worrying about his daughter, huh? So, some unusual characters headed up to Anderson's house. Policeman from London. Huh, where have we met policemen from London before, you know? Hmm, wasn't Chelmy from London? Hmm, seems fishy indeed. Yeah, Inspector Chelmy and his assistant. Chelmy, you say? Ah, right. Mr. Must be uh, Chelmy. Well, that's uh, interesting. Yeah, maybe there is a connection between the Elysian box. I suppose we'll uh, have to ask him about that. So... Let's just uh, see if uh, we know anything. Ah, and uh, apparently Beluga also goes to Mr. Anderson. Hmm, interesting. But Purcell uh, is gonna leave again, so that that's okay. That's okay. Um. Well, let's let's uh, actually go down now. Um, and if we head to the right here, if I can, there's a new guy here. Yeah, uh, the old lady went away, but hey, Lopez is here. Uh, but he seems a bit more like a street punk. He doesn't really want to uh, talk with us or something. So, uh, he's dreaming up an, the ma most amazing hat, but I'm sorry, your hat is nowhere near as good as ours. It really isn't. But we are sorry for disturbing you. Well, let's uh, prove it by solving his puzzle. Which is puzzle 52. Hat weather. There is a fellow with very particular rules about when he wears his hat. When it's rainy, or oh, when it's sunny, he always wears his hat. When it's rainy, he doesn't wear his hat. When it's cloudy, he doesn't wear his hat unless it's been cloudy for two days in a row, in which case he wears his hat on the second of these days. Below is the schedule of when this fellow decided to wear his hat over the course of one week. Use the panels to fill in the weather for each day of the week. Now, um, of course when it's rainy, uh, he doesn't wear his hat, and when it's cloudy, he also doesn't, unless, you know, of course, it's been two days in a row. However, we can pretty easily say, you know, it's been rainy here and rainy here, because he doesn't wear his hat on those days. We only have two rains, we need to fill them in, which assumes that all the other days, uh, he will have worn his hat. Now, of course, you know, when it's uh, sunny, he wears his hat, so uh, we can just place those there, and those there, but then... You know, of course, we still have one cloudy left, so how do we solve that? Well, he doesn't wear it unless it's been cloudy for two days in a row. Of course, you know, there's nowhere in this week that it's cloudy two days in a row. 
Uh, but if you assume that the Sunday in front of this Monday was cloudy, then if it's cloudy on Monday again, he will wear his hat. So that's what you gotta assume, and then you can fill it in. So this should be good. Consider this puzzle solved. Huh, wonderful. So yeah, uh, that's right. You just gotta assume that Sunday. Hmm, that is how it works. Okay, well we're back in uh, his good books and we are quite snappy dressers. You're right. So let's uh, not get our clothes dirty. But that was just a small little detour. I kind of forgot about that. I actually wanted to do that before I uh, had it to the left here. But that's okay. That's uh, definitely okay. Let's... Uh, Head inside this building here. We uh, talked with Parcel earlier. And, hmm. Um, what do you have to say? Who are you anyway? Ah, Dorothea. Uh, yeah, we haven't uh, been here before. We're Professor Layton. Yeah, Herschel Layton. Ah, thank you. Thank you for the welcome. Ah, uh, you're the maid in service of the Anderson family, huh? Well, uh, we're looking for the Elysian box. That's right. Hmm. She hasn't heard of it, though... Her master is apparently very uh, knowledgeable about that. So yeah, we definitely need to pay Mr. Anderson a visit. Ah, yes. We are new here. Um, well, we already knew about Mr. Anderson, and he is the, she is the maid, so I figured that much. Although Leighton didn't quite get it as quickly. Um, but yeah, we would like an audience with him. Um, ah, he's been too preoccupied with his daughter, hmm? That's a shame. Hmm. Okay, so his daughter has been secretly planning a trip. Huh. What kind of trip? And something's going on behind his desk? Or his back? Hmm. So the servants gonna give, are going to give her a warm welcome, but or a warm, warm send-off. I can't read today. But apparently uh, the master isn't quite happy with that. Uh, because... Ah, uh, okay, so it's for her grandmother, huh? Hmm, what are those wishes? Well, so we've only heard scraps. Hmm, but she, it's apparently very important. Oh, well, she needs to prepare supper and uh, not gossip so much. So I guess uh, we are still missing a lot of details, but uh, I guess uh, we'll have to look some more into that. Because, yeah, the servants do seem to have a solid reason if they would keep a secret from Mr. Anderson. Hmm, Dropstone might not be that ordinary after all. You are definitely right. So, let's uh, keep looking around and oh, look at this cute cat statue. I'd like a cat statue like that. I, I, I really like the expression. It is definitely cute. Oh, but Luke has a puzzle for us, which is Puzzle 51. Crazy cats. One of the three color pictures A, B, or C is the same picture as the black and white one displayed on the far left. Can you find which one? The only difference is that the picture on the far left has had its content flipped left to right and its colors inverted and changed to black and white. So this is another one of those find the differences picture. Although, you know, a bit trickier than the last one we encountered. Um, so it, it's gonna be a bit trickier to figure this out, but I think we can still do it. Um, so let's see, what can we find out? Well, um, one thing if we look in A is that if we look at the like the eyelashes here, that cat's eyelashes all seem shorter than the other ones. So that is definitely a sore one out already. Um, so I don't think it's going to be A. Uh, now let's uh, see if we can find anything interesting on C or B. Hmm. Well. If we look closely, uh, if we look on C, for example, we can see here that the amount of width does bars behind the cat take up are a lot less than on the other two pictures. So I think those are the two differences and that B is going to be the correct one. 
Consider this puzzle solved. A true gentleman leaves no puzzle unsolved. And there we go. That is indeed the correct uh, one. As you can see, the, uh, those eyelashes were wrong in A and then the bars in C. So yeah, Layton does make things look pretty damn easy. Let's uh, head back out. And uh, up there we can see a mansion of some sort. So maybe Mr. Anderson lives there. Let's uh, see if we can go there. But oh, who's this? Ah, he's a world traveler, but he's stuck here until he can get on the Molentary Express. But, uh, yeah, you can't really get a freebie with Mr. Beluga. Oh, but he couldn't even solve it, huh? Well, let's uh, see if we can solve his puzzle for him, which is puzzle number 45, Baggage Claim. What rotten luck. While trying to pick up your luggage, you find that your bag is at the very back of the pile. The porter unloading the luggage claims the other boxes in the hold have prevented him from unloading yours. Use your wits to remove all the blocks out of the way and reclaim your luggage. So, as always with these uh, sliding puzzles, I'm gonna super speed it for you guys, so let's go. This should do the trick. There we go. A true gentleman. That should be all good. Unsolved. We got it. Nice. So yeah, we are quite clever. I don't know why Mr. Beluga couldn't solve that. Hmm, but there's a phantom town, huh? Interesting. Interesting indeed. Thanks for the advice, Romy. Uh, which I also like, because Romy roaming around. They are quite clever with names in this game. Let's uh, check out this big grass field. It's a cute little farm. Uh, animal gr animals grazing seem to be in a good mood. So let's uh, do a quick little puzzle here. Puzzle 38. Four horses. You have four horses, all of which travel at different speeds. In traveling from point A to point B, these horses take 1, 2, 4, and 6 hours, respectively. One day you decide to move all your horses from point A to point B. However, you can only move a maximum of 2 horses at a time, and you need to ride a horse back to point A each time you return to move your other horses. Knowing you can only move as fast as the slowest horse you're traveling with, what's the fewest number of hours it will take to move all horses? So, uh, for this first one, let's just um, go quickly. Okay, so for our first move, um, let's say that we move with uh, number ho horse number two and horse number one. So that would take us two hours. And then we drive uh, or go back with horse number one. So that is two plus one. So that moves, uh, that has horse number two taken care of. Then the second time we could um, go, go there with both horse number four and horse number six, which would take us, of course, uh, six hours. But since horse number two is also there, we can take horse number two back. So that would take two extra hours, although horse number two is now back. However, we have taken these two back over. But that's no problem at all, because now we do uh, take the two hour trip back once more. Uh, and then everything should be on the other side. So two plus one is three, plus six is nine, plus two is 11, plus another two should be a total of 13 hours. Let's uh, see if my answer is right. Hmm. Let's see if this works. Layton's apprentice strikes again. That's right. That does do the trick. And I hear you can see it in a bit of a more clear schematic, maybe. So yeah, they really do look like they're enjoying the sun. That's nice. 
That's very nice. And now uh, we got another camera part, tiny camera part. Looks like it was the SD card or something. Uh, okay, well, uh, let's uh, see. We can walk over to the right now. So let's uh, just check over here then. Ah, a big mansion. Yeah, it is impressive indeed. So uh, it's probably that they went there. But, oh, Flora wants to go over there herself. Oh, uh, we, we can't go there quite yet. I suppose they would be have their hands full with their current guests, so we'll just uh, take care of looking around the other, f uh, the rest of the village. And uh, uh, what, what are you staring in the water for? Ah, Gabe. Ugh. Oof. That should do it. That that should do what? Oh, he's doing some fishing, huh? Well, uh, how is his luck so far? Actually, that's a good question. How many have I managed to catch today? Well, let's uh, see if we can figure out how many he caught by solving puzzle 33, fishing net. A large net has been cast out in a pond to catch some fish. The pond's surface is small, but it's actually wider underwater, so parts of the sunken net are no longer visible from the surface. Assuming that there are no tears in the net, and that the whole rim of the net is constructed of a single length of rope that ends on the shore, how many fish visible in the pond will be caught when the net is pulled up? Now this is quite simply uh, just trace the line here and see what falls inside of it. That That is really all you have to do. And it can take quite a bit, but you just gotta do it that that is really the way to solve it now of course you know if you don't want to draw it yourself you don't have to i will provide you with the answer in just a little bit but i like showing you how to solve these things so you can uh, improve your cognitive thinking as well you know so you don't only um don't only learn the answers and just input them but let's see now this uh, should do it. So now everything inside of this net should be gun gotten. So this one, um, I believe there is this one here that we get. Uh, which other ones? Of course, this one is in the middle of our net. Um, this one isn't, but this one should be. Uh, I believe this one as well as this one. Um... So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, and um, oh right, of course this one right here. So that's seven fish that we should be able to get with our net. So that's very nice. Seven, yes. Just leave it to me. Piece of cake. So yeah, that's right. We uh, got it right. Seven fish. Damn, what a hole. He's gonna feast like a king. Uh, seven fish isn't... I guess if you're gonna eat them alone, but maybe you shouldn't. You are... Uh, you seem like your belly is kind of round. Maybe, maybe, you know, invite some other people over, share the fish, and... Oh, it's Jomi. Oh, he must be back from his visit. Ah, yeah, are you returning from the Anderson estate? How are we sly as a fox? We're just asking. But, ah, uh, he wasn't home, huh? So he's in the livestock competition. Well, let's see. I guess uh, we're gonna have to go over there later and uh, find that out. But uh, maybe he can be of help. So, there's some rumors that uh, he had tried to find the Elysian box, huh? Hmm, I see. Well, uh, I guess we'll ha definitely have to talk with him then. So yeah, why would he be interested in the Elysium box? That is anyone's guess. Maybe he's just interested in artifacts. But we uh, will have to head over to the livestock competition in a little bit. So uh, he doesn't really like it. He thinks it's just a distraction. But yeah, Chelmy is uh, definitely very, very grumpy. But if we uh, find anything, he wants us to report it to him. But I don't think we will quite do that even though we say so um we're definitely um going to do our own investigation rather than help chow because he doesn't really seem too helpful so uh, we need to hurry back to the grounds and uh, go back to the livestock competition 
But before that, let's uh, talk with him and solve one last puzzle. So, oh, we woke him up. Ah, that's impressive to be able to stand up sleeping. Hmm, security guard, huh? Perimeter is secure. Please confirm identity by solving this puzzle. Wow, he can sleep, give us puzzles. Puzzle 44, Tangled Ropes. Three loops of a rope are tangled together with a single red rope that has been tied in a very loose knot. Can you work out how many of the smaller loops of the rope would get caught in this knot when the red rope is pulled tight from both ends? Remember, even if a loop passes through the knotted part of the red rope now, it might fall away when the red rope is tightened. So basically what you want to do for this is imagine that you just pull on both ends of this red rope here and you want to know which ones would actually get stuck in the knot that forms in the middle here. And well, um, it's actually, I, I believe that none would actually get stuck in there. I mean, it's at most three, um, you know, because there's only three other ones, but this blue one doesn't seem to really get stuck at all in there. At least I don't think it would. Um, yellow and green one might get stuck in each other or something. But I don't know. You know, I, I don't know. I don't think any will actually get stuck. So let's just input zero. And now to test my theory. Huh. Wonderful. So yeah, here you can see, none of them actually get stuck. They'll just hang on it, but don't get stuck in the knot itself, which uh, is perfectly fine. So yeah, correct answer confirmed. So yeah, he is uh, talking in his sleep about puzzles, which even Leighton doesn't do. Anyway, I'm gonna end off the episode here, so thank you guys for watching. If you want to see more, then please do consider subscribing, and we'll see you all in the next one.